Lesson 5.8, Word Problem Solving Decimal Operations. We're going to work backward. We can use the strategy Work Backward to solve multi-step division problems by using a flowchart to find the unknown information. A flowchart is a diagram made of many boxes and arrows, and flowcharts can be used to show an algorithm. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step list of directions that need to be followed to solve a problem. Flowcharts can be used to show a process, which is a series of stages in time where the last stage is our result or goal. And flowcharts can be used to show stages of a project. We have boxes with arrows showing the stages or the steps. There's several different strategies we can use to solve word problems. We can act it out with models. We can make a quick drawing. We can make a table of data or a chart. We can break it into simpler problems or, like we're going to do in this lesson, we can work backward. The boxes show the steps that need to be followed. The arrows show the order of the steps or different options. And if we work backward, we'll begin at the final step and work towards the first step. Emma spent $10.53 for two cupcakes and four cookies. The cupcakes cost $2.20 each. The sales tax on the total purchase was $0.63. Cents. Emma also used a coupon for $0.50 cents off her purchase. If each cookie had the same cost, how much did each cookie cost? So notice it gave us the price of the cupcakes. It gave us the amount of the tax and the coupon but she bought four cookies and we don't know how much they cost or how much they each cost. So we think we can make a flow chart to show the information, then we can use inverse operations for each step as we work backward to solve. So in our flow chart, we start with the cost of four cookies, that's four times the cost of one cookie, plus the cost of two cupcakes, we know they were $2.20 each, 2 times $2.20 is $4.40, plus the amount of the tax, which was $0.63. Cents. Then we subtract the amount of the coupon of $0.50, cents, and we know she spent $10.53. To work backwards, we're going to come down here, and we're going to put the total spent in this spot. It was over here. The amount of coupon, the $0.50, cents, goes here. The amount of tax is here. The cost of two cupcakes is now here, and it's going to equal the cost of four cookies. $10.53 plus the cost of the coupon. We subtracted the amount of the coupon, so now we're going to add the amount of the coupon, the inverse operation. That's $11.03. We need to subtract the amount of tax because we added the amount of tax, and subtraction is the inverse of addition. We have $11.03 minus the tax of $0.63. Cents. We have $10.40. We're going to subtract the cost of the two cupcakes because we added the cost of two cupcakes and subtraction is the inverse of addition. We have $10.40 minus the cost of the two cupcakes is $6. That means the four cookies are $6, but we're not quite done. The problem said if each cookie had the same cost, how much did each cookie cost? Now that we know four cookies cost $6, we need to divide $6 by 4 to know the cost per cookie. We have $6 divided by 4. 4 fits into 6 one time. We make sure our dollar sign is up here. We put a 1. 4 times 1 is 4. We subtract and get a 2. We can add a decimal point and a 0 here. To continue dividing, we drop down the 0 and 4 fits into 20 five times. And 4 times 5 is 20, we subtract and get a 0. Now because there are two place values to the right of a decimal point for money amounts, we can insert a trailing 0 as a placeholder. So the cookies cost $1.50 each. And we can use these amounts to work forward to check our math. We can use the $6 and the $0.63 cent sales tax and the $4.40 the $4 for the cost of two cupcakes. We can add them all together and see if we get her total spent to check our math. 
So remember, inverse operations are opposite operations. Addition is the inverse of subtraction. Subtraction is the inverse of addition. And because we subtracted the amount of the coupon when working forward, we needed to add the amount of coupon when working backward. And because we added the amount of tax when working forward, we need to subtract the amount of tax when working backward. Bob ate 10 slices of pizza. Two slices were cheese, three slices were sausage, and the rest were pepperoni. How many slices of pepperoni pizza did Bob eat? Now this is kind of an easy problem, but I wanted to show it to you to show you the flow chart. We have some number n slices of pizza plus the two slices of cheese plus the three slices of sausage is equal to the 10 slices that he ate in all. To work backwards, we start with the 10 slices he ate in all, and because these were plus, they're now going to be minus. They're going to be inverse operations. We subtract the three slices of sausage and the two slices of cheese and find that it's equal to five. That means he must have eaten five slices of pepperoni pizza. A box set of the four City of Ember books costs $21.49. That's for the box set. We can save $8.87 by buying the set instead of buying the individual books. If each book costs the same amount, how much do, does each of the four books cost when purchased individually, when they're bought separately? So we think the cost of the books would be $21.49 plus the $8.87 for all four if we bought them separately. Then we can divide the sum by four to find the cost per book. So we add the price of the box set plus the savings and we get $30.36. If we bought each of the four books separately, that's how much we would have paid. We can divide $30.36 by four to find the price per book. Four can't fit into three, so we don't put the quotient starting here. Four can fit into 30 seven times because four times seven is 28. So we put the seven above the zero for the 30. We subtract and get a two. It's the three's turn to come down. Four fits into 23 five times because four times five is 20. We subtract, bring the three down. It's the six's turn to come down. Four fits into 36 nine times. Four times nine is 36. We get a zero remainder and our decimal point in our quotient goes directly above the decimal point in our dividend. We find it was $7.59 per book if we bought them separately. Sophia spent $28.17 including sales tax for three yards of fabric, a spool of thread, and six buttons to make a dress. The fabric cost $6.29 per yard, the thread cost $1.85, and the sales tax was $1.75. Fill in the table for the correct cost for each item. So we know three yards of fabric were $6.29 each yard, so one yard is $6.29. She bought a spool of thread that was $1.85, so we know one spool of thread is $1.85. We know the sales tax was $1.75, so we can fill that in, but we don't know the cost of one button. So we think we can multiply $6.29 by three yards. We get $18.87 for the fabric. Then we can add the price of the thread and the sales tax to get a subtotal. We get $22.47. We know she spent $28.17 if we subtract $22.47 from that total, we'll find that she spent $5.70 for six buttons. Now we can divide by six to know the cost per button. $5.70 divided by six, the six can't fit into the five, so we can put a zero there in the dollar place. But six can fit into 57 nine times because six times nine is 54. We subtract and get a three. It's the zero's turn to come down. Six fits into 30 five times, and six times five is 30. We subtract and get a zero. 
we know the price of one button is 95 cents, we can fill it into our table. There were many steps to this problem. We needed to fill the table in with the information that was given in the problem. Then we needed to multiply the amount of fabric by the price per yard. We had to add the price for the thread and the sales tax to that. And once we knew how much all of those were, we subtracted it from how much she spent, and we knew that the six buttons were $5.70. We divided that by six buttons to know the price per button. So here's an example of another type of flowchart. We start with the lamp doesn't work. We go to this box and it asks, is the lamp plugged in? We have a choice of yes or no. If the lamp is not plugged in, we plug it in and we've solved the problem. If the lamp is plugged in and it's still not working, we ask, is the cord or plug broken? We have a choice of no or yes. If the cord or plug is broken on the lamp, we fix that cord or plug. If it's not broken and it's still not working, we ask, is the bulb burned out? We have a choice of no or yes. If the bulb is burned out, we put in a new bulb. If the bulb is good and it's not burned out, we ask, does the outlet have power? We have a choice of yes or no. If the outlet does not have power, we fix that electrical outlet or we check the circuit breaker. If the outlet does have power, we can continue on drawing boxes and arrows with different choices to help us figure out why the lamp doesn't work. So as you're making your flowcharts, make sure you have them in the correct order and make sure they represent the right amounts and that you're using inverse operations when you reverse to work backward. This is the end of chapter five. Chapter six is gonna be all about addition and subtraction of fractions with unlike denominators. I hope I'll see you there and I hope you have a great day. Bye.